It was a shocking turn of events after weeks of protests in Hong Kong. A group of men in white shirts attacked demonstrators heading home after an anti-government march. Protesters said that officers ignored their repeated calls for help. Under public pressure, the police defended their actions and acknowledged small gaps in their response. There may be some uh, room for improvement in the deployments. But their conduct left many wondering why they didn't do more. We reviewed hours of video and spoke to a dozen witnesses to look at how officers failed to stop the violence. Our investigation reconstructs what happened that night. It's Sunday, July 21st. Anti-government demonstrations are happening on Hong Kong Island. Protests like this one have been going on for weeks. They started in opposition to a controversial extradition bill, but now protester demands are growing. Meanwhile, 18 miles away in Yanlong, a town near the border with mainland China, a crowd has gathered. Most are wearing white t-shirts and rallying in support of the government. A prominent pro-Beijing lawmaker is there. Traditional villages in this region have a long history with Hong Kong's organized crime societies known as triads. Experts say that while the triads have a patriotic reputation, they're essentially thugs for hire and will work for whomever pays them the most. Members of triads have been accused of violence against anti-government protesters in the past. And some of the people behind the night's violence were later identified by police as triad members. Now, let's go back to what happened that night. It's just past 10 p.m. where the pro-government rally is taking place and things are getting violent. Videos show at least three individuals being beaten by men in white t-shirts. Lam Chuk Ting, a lawmaker who supported some anti-government protests, says he learns about the violence and calls the police at 10.22 p.m. When I received the message that a youngster was attacked by the gangster, I then decided to go to Greenlaw to monitor the situation. Outside, at around 10.40 p.m., we see men in white walking towards the Yanlong train station, where anti-government protesters from Hong Kong Island have been arriving on their way home. Lam Chuting warns them of the danger outside. But the mob comes inside the station. And they begin to taunt the protesters. Moments later, we see two officers leaving the scene. Police said that they had received the first call from the train station at 10.41 p.m. and that these officers left to call for backup. But once they leave, the violence escalates. A reporter is live streaming when she's attacked by the mob. People run up the stairs trying to escape. The men in white chase them onto a train. Some men hold open the train doors, while others beat people inside. Bystanders are caught up in the melee. Meanwhile, others are trying to get help at two nearby police stations. But when some arrive at Yanlong police station, officers are seen closing the gates. And at another police station, officers sit inside as people bang on the door. Police later said that officers closed the doors for security reasons. Back at the train station, the violence continues. Finally, the train leaves. Lam is among the injured. You can see, my right hand have a bone fracture, and my mouth, you can see my mouth. The violence lasts for about 20 minutes. In our analysis, we never see any police officers at the scene during this period. It's now 11.15 p.m. As some of the men in white t-shirts run away, police do not appear to pursue any of the perpetrators. Protesters confront police for their lack of action for nearly half an hour. At 
this point, the officers leave the station. Entrance gates close behind them. But at 12.26 a.m., the mob in white t-shirts is back. They break through the train station gate and start to beat people again. Eight minutes later, this dash cam video shows men in white t-shirts casually walking past police vehicles while officers walk away. White-shirted men continue to beat protesters outside. Some of the men gather at a parking lot. In this video, we see police entering the train station as the men in white are just outside. Police surround the area for the next couple hours. It's 2.35 a.m. We see two men still holding their weapons, chatting with officers. This is important because hours later, police officials said that they did not see anyone holding weapons. Finally, around 4 a.m., several of the men in white t-shirts drive away. No one was arrested overnight. At least 45 people were injured during the attack at the Yenlong station. Police have admitted that they were informed about a potential attack in Yenlong in advance. The Hong Kong police commissioner said the anti-government protests were the reason for the slow police response. Every time when there is a major event uh, which may lead uh, to violence, confrontation, I we have to be deployed some of my manpower from various districts to the Hong Kong Island. The police have since arrested 12 suspects for the attacks, many of them with triad connections. Still, protesters say officers could have done more to prevent the violence. The police force deliberately turned a blind eye to the wrongdoings and let the Hong Kong people uh, being attacked in discriminacy right down in Hong Kong. Most of Hong Kong people do not trust the police force anymore. Almost a week after this incident, thousands gathered in Yenlong to protest the attack and the police response. This time, the men in white shirts appeared to remain on the sidelines, and it was the police who countered protesters with force. <laughs>
度有警員啊，呢度呢個係交通警啊。掹菜啊嘛，佢掹菜。喂喂喂喂喂，哇哇哇哇，哇哇哇，啱啱去，啱啱去開槍啊！佢識佢係開槍噶，呢呢一個係拍手掌啊！呢、這個人士。佢攞支槍係封住佢啊！佢開槍頭先喺度，咦？啲地下成日啲血喺地下㗎，咁佢唔知係咪？佢唔知係咪已經係暈咗啊？佢誒有眨眼嘅。
interviewed experts in crowd control. We identified seven incidents caught on camera that contradict official statements and show that police officers did use excessive force according to experts. On June 9th, one million people took to the streets to protest a bill that would allow Hong Kong to detain and extradite people from mainland China. The proposal stoked fears over the erosion of civil liberties that have long set Hong Kong apart from the Chinese mainland. Protesters' demands went unheeded. Days later, on June 12th, lawmakers put the bill to a vote. <laughs> 從來街外面四方八面這樣湧出來我們看到鄧大使街那裏大家都舉手左手或者右手舉起五代表代送球決一不可現在向下去seriously thought we could see another Tiananmen Square in Hong Kong. Now, you can't rule it out. Hong Kong, for all its woes, is still a very rich world financial center. Uh, to roll troops into that kind of financial center would be an economic catastrophe.
，但係社區又發生廣泛嘅傳播咧，跟住個選項咧就要進行家居隔離。咁所以社會要有心理準備，如果冇檢疫中心嘅設施咧，可能佢嘅鄰居係接受緊家居隔離。最後一議題就係、是、關於誒物資。防疫抗疫嘅工作咧，係需要資源嚟到配合嘅。財政嘅資源已經不是問題，無論我本人或者財政司司長都公開講過啦。任何可以配合防疫抗疫工作嘅財政資源，係完全唔會缺少嘅、啊。就算啊誒，而家我哋未攞到申請撥款，我哋都係。提供呢啲財政嘅資源，然後稍後啲先去處理嗰、那個即係申請嘅安排啦。但係物資嘅供應而家係相對緊張啊，無論喺口罩啊，或者誒誒。有成就你都驚，咁你唔好嚟香港啦，唔好嚟香港啦。我就講廢話。最後啦。香港夠亂㗎，冇錯，我搞亂香港，我聽。
，等我去，等我去開槍啊！頭先佢係開槍㗎，即係呢一個係拍手掌啊！呢個人士，佢攞支槍係空住佢啊！佢開槍，頭先喺度。佢開槍，頭先，即係咪中咗槍啊？呢個嘅小朋友啊！啊<音樂>